Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Caldwell, Hadwell, I think it's Caldwell, uh, Ballistics Precision Chronograph Premium Kit. Um, this is a chronograph, a item that I've been trying to get my hands on for a while. Um, of course, you might be familiar with my Chrono Barrel. It's about, it's pretty much the same thing, except this thing can actually measure half-length darts and doesn't need to be attached to a blaster. Um, this is normally used in the firearms industry, the air rifles and, um, you know, bows and arrows, hunting, kind of thing like that. Um, this is usually used in the reloading scene of firearms where you have your powder, your casings, and your bullets uh, to test your speeds and if your bullets are, um, you know, okay or not. But we're not using it for that, we're using it for foam darts, uh, not actual bullets. Um, and. Many people have used this on YouTube. It seems like every YouTuber who does nerf reviews has a Caldwell Caldwell Precision Chronograph, um, which you know is interesting. But this is like the old, kind of one of the only ones on the market that's actually affordable. I'll get into pricing at the end of the review. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much talking about what this is. We're gonna box it, and this is gonna add a lot to our reviews now because I'll be using this in reviews. Let's get started by talking about the box. All right, onto the box, talking about the box section. So, we first start out with this long chunk of text here. It tells you about the chronograph itself. It says that it, it's calibrated within um, 0.25% uh, accuracy. So, the numbers are gonna be, you know, more or less within range. Uh, simple operation, large LED screen. So, it has a screen on it. You can't really tell because it's a sticker. Uh, measures in meters and feet per second. It uh, has sunscreens, LEDs for indoor and outdoor use. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, it has the option to interface with smartphone. Also can connect with that uh, 20 foot audio jack cable that it comes with. There's an app, the app display for the app is on there. Also runs on a nine volt battery. Um, the rest of the box uh, tells you what it comes with on the bottom. comes with the chronograph, the two LED light panels, um, adjustable tripod, the AC cord, a battery pack for the light panels, four AA batteries are not included, a 25 foot audio jack cable, a Y splitter which is used for the lighting kit, and a custom carry case. The rest of the box is pretty just this back of the box product pretty much just talks about the app. Top kind of talks about light panels, but we'll just talk about that when we get them out of the box. And the sides are pretty boring. Except for this side, which has a big old dent in it. So I kind of want to see if this thing is fully functioning. So uh, let's get to the unboxing part of the video. There we go. So there's nothing in the box. I guess it's all in the case. All right, so for context, uh, I've reviewed actually opened in a box of blaster, blaster, um, the chronograph a week ago, and I didn't like the footage, so I'm retaking a lot of it, pretty much the entire test. I'm gonna use fewer blasters, and we're gonna be using and actually showing the entire assembly of the chronograph. So, um, probably sh might keep the unboxing footage. We don't know yet. Uh, but if not, here's the instructions, here's the bag, has our lighting kit battery pack, do part in the noise, the splitter cable for the lighting kit, and an adapter, we also have our uh, power, our power adapter, our AC to DC power adapter, which this does come off, and you can replace it with your European power adapter uh, plug. Um, that's for also for the lighting kit. We have our chronograph. I have screwed on the bottom plate, which by the way does come off. Uh, that's to attach to the bipod. It is a pain to attach to the bipod, so bipod. And of course we have our lighting kit right here. And that 25 foot audio cable for uh, use on your phone. Okay, so um, assembly is pretty simple. Uh, we're going to assemble the entirety of the chronograph. Uh, just for 
just so you know, um, these on here, these curved ones, don't actually come with this. They're pretty much just this without a light strip. Um, so I'm assuming they decided there's no point to including both when you can just use this. Anyway, so uh, you have this rod. The rod goes into these holes at an angle. So it doesn't go straight in. They go in an angle. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you orientate the plug. It doesn't matter. Or which one goes in the front, which one goes in the back. It just goes in. I'm going to do it this side because I'm going to put the battery pack nearby here. And you do the same with the other side. Um... If I don't have the original assembly slash original unboxing, uh, I will mention here, I do want to mention that this plate, when you first take it off, which we're going to take it off anyway, is really hard and we're showing some stress uh, marks on it. Of course, we have our battery, battery plugs in, like so, just like a normal battery. There's a spare battery compartment. Uh, then we can put it in there. Or in spare battery compartment, whichever one you want to suit, uh, whichever one suits you. Um, and we're gonna put these. I don't know if you can see that right in the back. This goes in the same exact spot, but on the back. Okay. Now this might be a little hard to see. We'll just bang it down here. Uh, to assemble the battery kit, it, this also, by the way, is kind of a difficult thing to open. Even after opening it once, it's kind of hard to open. Uh, we have a fresh pack of Energizer, back batteries, not a sponsor. So it takes four AA batteries, and what you want to do is you want to make sure you put this one, this one in first, because this little, I don't know if you can see that, um, there's a little gap here, so it's impossible to put it in if there's another battery next to it. Also, that battery is very hard to get out, um, so keep that in mind. Also, do take the batteries out every time you're going to put this away because you don't want battery leaks or anything like that. So, there's our battery pack and we get our splitter cable. So, the splitter cable has your switch on it and has the two uh, plugs. They go in like so. And that plugs into your battery pack. So, I'm going to flip it over real quick and push in the button. Turns the lights off. Um... The purpose of these lights is to stabilize the amount of light um, in the area. Without these, in, in let's say, indoors, <clears throat> there would be like a little bit too light, uh, too little light, um, so it won't detect anything. Or outdoors, pretty much the same deal, too much light will uh, cause issues. Um, which is why you have the normal shades. Uh, so this allows you to use the indoor and outdoor. Um, but in my experience of using this, regardless of indoor or outdoor, you end up having to use the lighting kit anyway. So, um, that's just something to keep in mind. So, we get this thing set up on the bipod. It's pretty much the same as attaching it to a <clears throat> camera. I'm going to set it up over, over, over yonder uh, behind me, uh, which I have a little box there where we're going to shoot the darts into so they don't go flying everywhere because I don't want to run around uh, and pick up darts. And, uh, after that we'll go on to the tests of the chronograph and, uh, See how well this thing works, which, spoilers, I already know how well it works. Um, on to the test. Alright, so before we start with the test, uh, I'm going to show you on the side here. Uh, this switch here uh, has a uh, as a feet per second and meters per second setting. We're going to be using meters per uh, not meters, we're going to be using the feet per second setting on this thing. So, we flip it to the front, and it tells you a bunch of information, feet per second, and then it counts down. Once it reaches this point, with, that, with those two brackets and the two lines, uh, that means it's ready to, uh, means you're ready to fire. Alright, so we're going to test the chronograph now. Uh, the lighting kit is active um, right now. This is basically take two of the entire test because I didn't have the lighting kit on and we aren't getting accurate results of how the blaster works. So. Uh, we're going to restart this. Uh, so we have magazines, 18 round magazines, uh, because we have a variety of different blasters. We have two magazine fed blasters, one representing spring powered, one representing motorized. So here we are. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we have six rounds of, uh, three, of, the, of the three different darts I use. 
We have on top uh, the Nerf Elite darts. We have Adventure Force darts in the middle, and at the very bottom we have um, darts on sure shot darts. And we're gonna test basically six shots at a time, representing the spring-powered blasters, magazine blasters. We're gonna be using a blaster maybe some of you recognize. This is the Adventure Force Aeon Pro, part of the Adventure Force Pro line. Uh, this is the first blaster I've ever reviewed on my channel, so it has some special things that has been on the channel for like over a year. So um, I'm going to load it up and test it. Uh, 132. 128. Duplicate. So when it says dupe 01, that means... Uh, the shot before is the same speed as the shot now. Shot now. So it's both 28. 124. 90. 127. Alright, so now we're going to move on to Adventure Force. I tried to not load. Error. All right, so errors. Um, there's two types of errors. Uh, you have an error three and an error two. Error three is your front sensor did not detect the projectile, and error two is your rear sensor did not detect the projectile. The way to fix this is to simply just turn it off and turn it back on again. 97. 107. 93, 131, and now we're on to Dart Zone, 26, 30, 22, 122, 125, 127, and 126. All right. Uh, on to the next blaster. The next blaster is a blaster that a lot of you people know about. This is the um, Moto Blitz. Um, same deal, 18 round magazine. Uh, Nerf darts, Nerf Elite first, then Adventure Force, then Dart Zone. We're not going to be using the Air Blitz system today uh, just because um, this thing doesn't pr pick up multiple projectiles pretty w really well, so. We're just not going to deal with it. Said, so I'm just going to simply go for the um, normal motors. It's going to be a little hard to aim, so I'm going to have to get pretty far down because it's on the review. It's hard to aim with this thing. 66. 71. 72. 68. 73 and 70. All right, now on to Adventure Force. 75. Duplicate. 78. 83. 81. And 73. So Pretty good 70s range. Uh, onto Dart Zone. 73. 70. 72. 75. 68. 67. Alright, a pretty good uh, set of numbers there. Um, this is, by the way, just speeds of how the darts fly this is an accuracy this is in range so by adding this to my videos um it's going to make quite a difference um uh, by the way i'm planning on adding these not as separate section but part of the range test uh so now let's move on to the next blaster all right so we're going to do the ranger uh this is representing the smart ar blasters uh on the market uh we're going to start out with our adventure Adventures, 
Nerf Elite darts. Hopefully we can aim this thing correctly because keep in mind, they don't all fire to the same spot, so. 65. Seventy-three. Shoot, I don't remember if the barrel fires there. Sixty-six. Sixty-five. And sixty-two. Alright. We're gonna move on to the Adventure Force starts now. Fifty-nine. Sixty-seven. Sixty-five. Fifty-nine. And 62. Alright, lastly, we're going to be using the dart zone. Uh, sure shot darts. 64. 63. 69. Hopefully that didn't change anything. Uh, 59. And uh, 49. Alright. So, yeah. I was, also, I was hoping those two darts that came back weren't going to mess with any sensors. Didn't seem to do too much. Alright, so we're going to use the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. We're going to be starting out with Adventure Force darts. And we have a special dart we're going to be using as well. Uh, which I didn't introduce this one. This is the Dart Zone Max darts. These are, you can buy at Target. So the, basically the Adventure Force Pro darts are for Walmart. And these are from Target. Both made by Dart Zone, just two different brands. Um, which I have had these a long time and just never mentioned I had these. Alright, take a couple shots first with uh, Adventure Force. One sixteen, one fourteen, one twenty nine, one fifteen. 112, 110. All right, third zone max starts. Which, by the way, um, after I'm doing testing off camera, these don't really like the speed loaders or the magazine um, due to their weird tapered heads. So, 163. Error two. Rear sensor did not detect that one. And we have a magazine jam. I'm gonna go reset it. 146. 121. 118. 128. Now this next dart, I'm a little scared. These are the darts that come with the uh, Dart Zone Mark II. This is the Green bamboo darts. I did not test them because they're expensive and you can't get your hands on. But this is kind of a pseudo review of them. So look how easy they go into the magazine. And the speed loader jammed it. <sighs> That's the one gripe I have about the Mark II is the speed loaders aren't good. 110. 115. You can see in there the darts are jammed. Error 3. 111. 120. And our last shot is going to be 103. Alright, on to the last blaster and then my final thoughts. Alright, so we're going to be testing out the Nerve Jolt. Very simple prime. Um, Start out with this. This kind of represents the single shot, almost like revolvers, kind of blasters. 52. I'm going to fire three of each, by the way, not six. 56. And last for the Elite. 54. Venture Force. Error three. 53. And 53. It didn't detect it. Start zone. Duplicate 53. Error 2. Alright, well, 
the jolt is essentially just a flash at 50 FPS. So yeah, let's move on to my final thoughts. Alright, so what are my final thoughts on the Coldwell Chronograph Premium Kit? Well, we're really just testing the chronograph here. Um, but before we do that, let's go over where I bought this and how much I spent. So I bought this on Amazon for $159.99. Um, I also checked Bass Pro Shop. Uh, they don't sell these, um, or at least they run out of them quickly for some reason. Um, and they only sell them by themselves because you got to get the premium kit for $160. Or get the chronograph for $100. But from my experience of using this thing, you might as well just get the premium kit. And for some reason, it's easier to get the premium kit than it is to get the actual chronograph by itself. It's a little weird. Amazon always says they're sold out. But premium kit, we got it. Um, so yeah, uh, that all out of the way. Um, let's move on to my pros and cons. Alright, so out of the cons first. Um... So these are kind of, I guess, nitpicky, uh, if anything. Um, first off, of course, is the cover. This thing is a little bit hard to get off when you first open it, but after a while, it becomes easier. Also, the same can be said about the light kits, uh, light panel, battery pack. Taking the batteries out is a little bit difficult, too, especially this last one, because it's in there a little bit tight. Kind of have to use like a screwdriver or something to get it out. There we go. And especially if your battery is like uh, the you know the little like the plastic casing around it. If that has this little frayed here, it might get stuck on the spring. Yeah. So that it has happened before in the past. I will not. Um, I will mention that. Not not the fact that I will not mention. I will mention that. Um, and the bipod. This is probably the worst con about this thing is the bipod. Um, because this thing is a little bit flimsy. But of course, like I said, it's a little bit nitpicky because it's kind of like a, like it's not a free bipod. You're paying for the bipod as well. But bipods you can get for like another one for like $20, $30 that's stronger than this. The bipod I'm using for my camera is compatible with this and it's stronger than that. So there's that. I guess also a problem would be the fact that it kind of requires the light panels. And not just light panels, but light panels need to be on as well. So the setup is a little bit of a pain. It might also be a con to say that there is no power port on here. That is for the factory to calibrate it and that is to communicate with your phone. There's no way to externally power it. You have to always use batteries. And I haven't had it drain the battery on me. Uh, but I've heard in reviews, other people's reviews on this, you know, on Amazon and online, batteries drain on these things quite quickly uh, if you leave them on for too long. Or right, the pros. Uh, first off, the bag. This is probably the biggest pro about this thing. When it said it comes with a case, I thought it only carried the chronograph, but this carries pretty much everything. It carries everything the kit comes with. In fact, in the unboxing segment, you saw that the Basically, the whole chronograph is in this bag. Everything is in this bag, which I like a lot. Not a lot of room for other things, uh, but the bag is pretty good for what it is. Basically, like when you buy a, um, a tool or something. It comes in a little case, like a socket set. Um, but, but I do like how the lighting kit does come with this. So if you are indoors, um, uh, you can just use your... Outlets, or if you're outdoors and you have an outlet nearby, you can just use it instead of having to set up the battery pack every time. Um, the chronograph itself is very intuitive. Uh, just turn it on, works. Uh, the instructions are also intuitive. They explain how to use this thing very, very simply. Simple design, simple um, ways of using this thing. Very easy to use. Uh, these kind of act like a target. You aim through, as long as they're within the two little triangles, you should be fine. Um, not too high, not too low, you should be able to use this. Very easy to use, so I give this thing a lot of, I give this thing a lot of praise for that. Um, and of course it's a useful tool, not just some gimmicky thing to have. Um, Alright, but before we end the video, I want to make a quick announcement. My channel has recently reached... 100 subscribers. Now, at the time of this recording of this video, I'm probably uploading, it's probably getting more because 
time I'm recording the second half of this uh, video. So last week I reached um, 100 subscribers. Today is the week after. So we've reached 130 at this point. Um, but still, we've reached 100 subscribers. So I'd like to thank all my subscribers and my viewers because we've also reached 50,000 views on this channel. Also reached 2,000 watch hours as well. So thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Um, and I'm planning on doing a 100 subscriber special. I have no idea what I'm going to do, so comment down below your ideas down below. If I use them, I will shout you out uh, in, that, in that video. Um, so, yeah, with that all out of the way, um, uh, yeah, so be sure to check out my other reviews. I have a playlist. I'll leave a link at the end of this video to that playlist. Uh, be sure to check out my um, my Minecraft Stormland review, the video where I teased this product in. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.